Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell. Today, let's take a quick tour of the algorithms available to you in Threading Building Blocks. Uh, head over to threadingbuildingblocks.org and we're going to click on the Learn menu and Documentation. And we're going to go down to Reference Manual. And down in there, you're going to find, if you scroll down, Algorithms. And let's briefly look at what each of these are. Uh, the simplest form of an algorithm is the Parallel 4 template function. And I'm going to open that in a separate tab. And I've covered this a little bit in my blog. And this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, it just uh, runs a, a range in parallel and you provide the start and the end and it will divide up using various uh, algorithms, internal algorithms, it will divide up your range into smaller parts and then divvy out those parts and then divide your work among multiple cores and threads. And this works with both uh, using a body function which it, it runs uh, with each iteration or you can use uh, C++ Lambda functions. I've covered that here at Go Parallel on my blog here. Um, just search Go Parallel for using new C++ Lambdas and you'll find it. Um, and in there I've got the code showing you some Lambda functions and how you can use that with uh, threading building blocks. And so that's your basic uh, Parallel 4, but there's several others. Another is Parallel Reduce, and Reduce works similarly to Parallel 4, except it uses a reducer, which is typically like a, for example, a summation that needs to be accumulated with every iteration. And for a reducer to work, you need to be able to break up your mathematical algorithm into smaller parts. Summation works well uh, if you need to add up every iteration and get a final number uh, because of the properties of, of arithmetic, you can break that up into smaller pieces and add up those smaller chunks and then take this, the individual summations and then do another addition on each of those. That's a, a reducer. And Parallel Reduce works much like Parallel 4 and it uses the same concepts of a body function and it also works with the C++ Lambda functions and the code ends up looking very similar. The next one on the list here is deterministic reduce template function. That one is very close to parallel reduce. Uh, the difference is when you do parallel reduce, you might find if you're using high precision uh, floating point numbers, you might find that you end up with a slightly different value at the end based on the order of, of that you actually perform the calculations. And the reason that is, is due to loss uh, when you deal with, for example, adding a large number with an extremely small number or whatnot. And it's very possible then that you actually need a very specific order for that to happen. And that's where the deterministic reduced template function comes in. Now, there's actually a really good article that I found. If you go to Google and put in parallel underscore deterministic underscore reduce, uh, the third one down, uh, I don't know if it'll be a third on yours, but it's third here. It's deterministic reduction, a new community preview feature, and it's written by Intel. And the guy who wrote this did a really good write-up. Uh, you can see he ran it multiple times and ended up with different numbers. So to fix that problem, he uses the deterministic reduce, where Normally, when you do a reduce, uh, the, the algorithms inside look at your current processor, uh, your resources, everything, and divides up your workload based on what's available. And you may end up with some ranges bigger than other ranges and whatnot. Uh, by doing a deterministic reduce, it doesn't do that. Instead, it uses a, a simple form of dividing up the work so you know each and every time you're going to get the exact same split up. I encourage you to take a look at this article. Uh, it's a really good example of where that comes into play. Now, the next one is Parallel Scan. Parallel Scan is not something that's likely to come up that often. Uh, but there are instances where, where you might find it's going to help out. Uh, normally when you do work in parallel, uh, the idea is that every single iteration does not rely on a previous iteration. And that way you can divide up the task into multiple cores, whatever, without having to have one iteration wait for a different iteration to finish. Well, there are situations where you might have uh, uh, each iteration relies on the one just before it. 
and there are ways you can actually make this parallel. It's not perfect, um, but it, but it will kind of work. The idea here is to let the the algorithm run through the entire process once and then run through it a second time. And so by splitting it up into multiple passes, two passes, uh, you might be able to, to get some better performance out of it. The catch is each pass needs, would then be split up into parallel cores because each one individually can do, be run in parallel. So each, each pass will get split up and the first pass will finish all of its, all of its threads and cores and then the second pass will begin, and then it will be split up into parallel. Now it's possible that what you're doing, that will actually take longer than the serial version. So it really depends on your particular situation. Uh, you try it, and if it can be split up into two passes, and each one can be broken up into parallel threads, uh, and then after that's all done, you compare and see if the, the serial version is slower or faster. Uh, then you decide which one is best for your project. So it's, it's not going to apply to every situation, but there are a few where it might come up. So let's go back here. The next one is Parallel Do. Now Parallel Do works a lot like Parallel 4. The main difference is with Parallel 4, you know where the ending is. And that's going to be typical with when you write a serial for loop. You, you do uh, some algorithm from, from A equals 1 to say A equals 100 or 1000 or however many you've got. With Parallel Do, however, you don't upfront know when it's going to end. So it's going to continue processing until a certain event happens. And the way this works is every thread needs to know what the next iteration is going to be. And so it uses what's called a feeder. The feeder tells it what the next one is. Now, as you can probably imagine, that might not actually result in full parallel performance. And that's true. Uh, the feeder itself might be serial. And so again, just like the, the other one, Parallel Scan, you may or may not see a performance increase. So you have to try it out and see if it works for your particular situation. And then Parallel for Each is actually very similar to uh, Parallel Do, but it doesn't have a feeder. And that's a, a topic that would take more than I could fit in this video. So uh, if there's an interest, uh, I can write a blog about that one. These others, parallel pipeline, think of a pipeline as a, a sequence of functions that have to run on each iteration. For example, one example they use a lot is if you're producing a video like I'm doing right now and you want to do a processing on every frame, each frame might have to do one, get processed one way and then a second way and then a third way. And the next frame has to do the same three steps. That's where the pipeline comes in. You have multiple functions that you call on every iteration. Parallel sort is a special sorting algorithm. It's, let's open it up here. Uh, it's what they call an unstable sort. An unstable sort, it says, might not preserve the relative ordering of elements with equal keys. So take a look at that one. It may or may not apply to your situation. And then parallel invoke. Uh, parallel invoke is when you've got not a large array that you're processing, but you might have, say, a dozen functions that you want to all run in parallel. And they might be unrelated to each other. That's where Parallel Invoke comes in. Uh, they've got an, an example here, or they've got three different functions here, and they run those three in parallel. So that's what Parallel Invoke does. So that's a very brief uh, introduction to what these algorithms are available. And take a look at them, and the documentation is all here. There's lots of examples. Google, read the blogs that we have here at Go Parallel, and try them out.